The 4x3 to 16x9 filter does exactly as the name suggests. It converts 4x3 aspect ratio footage to 16x9 aspect ratio, whether it's SD or HD. And it can even up-res SD to HD, but you have to follow a very specific workflow for each host. So uh, of all the hosts, let's go and take a look at Premiere Pro first. So in Premiere Pro, there's a preference in general, and that is uh, default scale to frame size. Now, if you turn this preference on before you import your clips, then all your clips will uh, scale to the frame size of the sequence automatically. Now, in my case, I didn't have this turned on when I imported my clips. But what I have done is I've made a 1920 by 1080 sequence. The sequence, of course, is 16 by 9. And I have a bunch of NTSC footage here. And I'm just going to drop in a few of these clips. And it's going to ask me, do you want to match the sequence's settings? And no, I do not. Uh, I want to keep this sequence as a 1920 by 1080 sequence because my master is going to be HD. And uh, this documentary will have HD footage, but it also has to have these 4x3 clips in it. So I'll say keep the existing settings. And because I didn't have that uh, setting turned on in preferences that I mentioned before, I'm getting a 1 to 1 pixel um, relationship here between the 1920 by 1080 and the 720 by 480. So what I need to do, I'm just going to select all of these um, NTSC clips. I'm going to right click or control click and then select scale to frame size. And then what Premiere Pro does is it scales up all of these archive clips so that they're just pillar boxed within the 16 by 9. I can throw any uh, 1920 by 1080 clip in here. And of course, that's full HD. And then I have uh, my archive interview footage. So uh, that's all you really have to do in Premiere Pro. And then, of course, you would just go over to Effects and under Dashwood Edit Editor Essentials, you would find the 4x3 to 16x9 effect and drag it onto your clips. Now, I'm not going to get into uh, all the settings yet, but the, let's have a look at some of the other um, host applications that you would use the plugin in. So next, why don't we go over to After Effects? We're going to make a new comp. Uh, in my case, I've made the comp and the composition settings are set to 1920 by 1080. So uh, the goal here is the same. We are going to put, say, uh, some HD footage in here. And okay, so here's just some HD footage. But now I want to put some archive um, NTSC footage into the sequence. Now what happens in this case is we don't get the automatic scaling happening. So I'm just going to grab a corner and I'm going to hold down the shift key so that it constrains the aspect ratio. I'm just going to pull this up until the uh, top and bottom edges touch the edges of our uh, 16 by 9. And at this point now what I have to do is make a pre-comp of this because I, if, if I were just to apply the plugin to this clip, it wouldn't fill the whole frame. So we have to pre-comp it. So to do that, you go to the layer menu and select pre-compose. So the pre-compose window comes up and it defaults to leave all attributes in comp one. But what we actually want to do is select move all attributes into the new composition. And what this will do is create the pre-comp. You'll see that it fills the whole um, length of the timeline of the composition timeline here. Um, but what it does do is it now is 16 by 9, it's just pillar box, and that's what we want. That's the goal. If you happen to have already had your footage transferred as pillar box, then you don't even have to worry about these uh, settings. You can just apply the filter directly to your clips. Now, moving on, let's look at the workflow in motion. In motion, we can just take these clips and throw them into a group. And then once they're in the group, now all we do is apply the actual plugin 4x3 to 16 by 9 to the group itself. So that's really easy. Just make sure that it's applied to the group and not to the clip. And 
Let's go over to Final Cut Pro 7, see how we do it here. Now here we already have our 1920 by 1080 sequence. I already have some HD shots in there. And our 4x3 footage is right here. Now before we do anything, let's go into User Preferences and over to the Editing tab. We want to make sure that this is checkmarked. Always scale clips to sequence size. So this, in, in essence, is the same setting um, that's in uh, Premiere Pro. So uh, that's already on. That's great. So now I'm just going to grab uh, a few of these clips, drop them into our sequence, and they automatically scale up. Now, I can't just, because these clips are still 4x3, I have to do something else with them. And so what I have to do is nest them. Now, I can nest them individually. And to do that, you just go up to the Sequence menu. I selected the clip, went up to Sequence, and selected Nest Item. The shortcut is Option C. When I nest the item, it's going to take the name automatically from, um, from the uh, clip itself. And uh, that's fine. I'll just say OK. And now I've got something that actually fills the 16 by 9. And that's what I will go into my effects here. Editor Essentials. And I will apply 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 to this. So that's, that's the workflow for Final Cut Pro 7. And last but not least, let's go over to Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and I already have a 1920 by 1080 sequence going on here. And um, the only reason we're seeing a checkerboard is because in the preferences I have the player background set to checkerboard instead of black. And that's just so we can see what's going on and confirm that we've actually made a compound clip. So let's have a look at how to do that. So this sequence is 1920 by 1080. And I want to drop in my 720 by 480 NTSC footage. So I'm just going to grab a few of my clips here, drop them in. There we go. Now, what I can do is I could grab all of the clips and make a compound, a single compound clip, and just start editing with that and splice it up. But instead, what I'm going to do is make separate compound clips. So you control click or, or right click and select new compound clip. And you will have to manually name this. And uh, that's unfortunately the way the Final Cut Pro 10 works. It doesn't, inter uh, doesn't name it for you. So this, uh, this one's going to be named Interview, but this is a compound clip. And then these two old 8mm clips, I'll just select both of them and make a compound clip. And I'm going to use the shortcut, which is Option G. And so we'll call this... Uh, Super 8 footage. Okay, so let's have a look at the Super 8 footage first. So now we have this new compound clip, and I'm just going to go into Editor Essentials and apply the 4x3 to 16x9 filter, and you can see it defaults to a stretch. And the only problem with stretching like this is you get a lot of distortion, of course, and we don't really want that. So let's have a look at what the options are here. And of course, these options are the same, whether you're in Premiere Pro or After Effects or Motion or Final Cut Pro 7. So horizontal stretch is the, uh, the first mode. Um, I'm going to skip crop and reframe right now and go straight to pillar box. Pillar box is basically exactly what the host was doing for us anyway. So if you're fine with that, you don't even need this plugin. You can just pillar box and, and leave it black on the left and right. But our plugin gives you a few more options. You can soften up the edge between the, uh, the black area and the image itself. Um, so I'm just going to bring that back down to zero. And out here we have a solid color, but we can change the background color. So we can make it, say if you want to make it just some color like that, then that's one option. And it's kind of nice if you combine softening along with uh, the color back there. Another option is to use Blurry. And Blurry takes the image, uh, takes its own image, stretches it, and blurs it out. And so you can combine soft edge and really blur that background if you like. 
and we can adjust the gamma of the background. So if you want it to be a little bit darker, you can do that. So that's kind of a neat uh, thing to do to the footage. It's kind of an alternative, but still not great. Not exactly the way I'd want to see it. Uh, you could select custom and at that point select any graphic that you want and throw into the drop zone or transparent, which of course just basically makes it transparent. So you could put this up on a second video layer and put any other image under it. Um, they functionally work the same, but if you use custom, then you can add blurriness to it and adjust the gamma as well. But let's look at this option here, crop and reframe. Now I like crop and reframe because basically what we're doing is we're, we're cropping 16 by nine out of the four by three. And then we have a slider here where we can choose our new composition. So I'm going to compose like this. So this is, there's the full four by three and I'm cropping it up. And we have three scale modes, a fast mode, standard, and an intelligent scale. Depending on the type of footage, um, how detailed the footage is, whether you have straight lines, uh, you, you'll just want to play around with the scale mode and make sure that you are actually watching the output from uh, your host on a full screen, full HD monitor to see what works best in the scaling. Now once you get everything all set up the way you want um, and you have certain shots that you want to replicate um, all of these same settings, you can save a preset. So just say save as and We'll save this as my uh, uh, common common headroom. So basically, that's a crop and reframe with common headroom, and then um, you'll be able to open it after the fact anytime uh, you want. Now let's just hop back over to uh, Premiere Pro. Let's have a look at a feature I I really like. So um, here's where we've uh, already applied the uh, the plugin before uh, we got everything set up and uh, it's uh, defaulting to horizontal stretch and instead what I'm going to do is uh, switch it over to nonlinear stretch and we get this option here called stretch bias now this works a lot like horizontal stretch except it's nonlinear so it's designed for four by three um, interview shots that basically use a uh, rule of thirds. So the idea here in this interview is I've moved the stretch bias all the way over to the right, which means the right side of the frame is, is ha having the stretch applied to it. And it's nonlinear, so this part of the frame still has the one-to-one -one pixel ratio. And then it very slowly, nonlinearly, moves into a stretch for compensation. So uh, we haven't blown up any of the pixels. So I'll just go back and forth between horizontal stretch, where we see uh, facial distortion, which we don't like, and then the nonlinear stretch, where the face is still the uh, proper aspect ratio. Um, it's a much better alternative. And uh, as far as resolution is concerned, you're not actually blowing things up. You're only stretching them left and right. And uh, so your uh, vertical resolution stays the same. So this, uh, to me, is the real power of this because now we can uh, mix uh, old interviews, old archive interviews in with newer HD footage and everything can still match up. And uh, I would think that the home viewer probably won't notice that there's this nonlinear stretch going on here. 